Hi, welcome to my review of the Grom Audio VL2 infotainment system installed in a 2004 Lexus uh, GX470. Uh, I helped organize a group buy for the forum I Hate Mud and thank you for all the support that I got from people all around to help make that buy possible and I just thought I'd go ahead and show you the unit and what I think about it, what works great for me, what I don't like about it, what's kind of crappy about it, and uh, whether I think it's worth it. Um, yeah, so first first and foremost, uh, the unit is just installed where the old CD changer was. The manual noted that it could be installed in parallel with the uh, stock CD changer and it may or may not work. It just comes down to whether or not it does and after you test it. Um, it has two custom cables that come out of the back of that unit that plug into the back of the uh, sort of upper um, display and head unit over here. And in order to get to that, you have to take apart the glove box. You have to pull off these panels and, um, and you also have to kind of route a mic, which involves taking off this thing down here. And in my case, I put it right there. Um, it's it's basically uh, it's a it's like an Android tablet um, running kind of a modified UI, I guess developed by Grom or or some kind of open source library that they that they modified. I'm not exactly sure. Um, and then uh, my primary use case for it is to run CarPlay on it, so I can listen to podcasts, music, um, anything on my phone, and like uh, get maps and just have kind of a little better, more modern voice control. Um, I don't run uh, Androids typically, so I have not tested the Android Auto. Um, the way it works is, uh, Nick, you, you, here you have your stock 2004 UI with, you know, destination, menu, display, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then since it takes the place of the CD changer, I guess it would toggle between the disc changer if the disc changer was still plugged in. But you press the disc button on the head unit and it just pops over here like that. When you first turn on the car, there's a little short. Oh yeah, it thinks there's a disc playing. It's kind of funny. So um, the worst thing about this system, in my opinion, um, mine does work fine and great. I love it. I'm glad I have it. But the worst thing about it is the 2004 touchscreen. Um, it only supports uh, sort of touch input. There's no multi-touch or there's no uh, touch to drag, things like that. And um, the precision is extremely low. Uh, the second bad thing about the unit that I have is this blue line on the right. Um, it's it's like the the video signal is like slightly out of sync or something, and it's just shifted over to the left. And you can see that the UI is just like cut off there, and then the other UI just kind of extends out the edge there. It's also you can see that the, it's kind of funny. You can see like chromatic aberration too, so there's like some kind of analog conversion going on. But, uh, but overall, I mean, it works. Uh, it has like a full Android like settings uh, menu. And uh, to get through the like sort of system menus, you just have to like press these up and down buttons. You can't scroll like that, at least on the 2004. Um, <laughs> maybe the newer screens have Where would you like to go? Uh, nowhere. Um, <laughs> and then you can switch between these two. Uh, home screens and, and put like various icons up there. I've gone ahead and removed all of them. I have two car plays up there just because I'll show you this little bug too. Um, like, oh, let me just press that little thing there. Oh, t you know, see, this is a, this is a sort of symptomatic of, of like, so if I tap anywhere, it just goes out. But if I try to, oh crap. If I try to um, tap that little X, I can't get it. It's just like not precise enough. So that's, that's what I kind of mean by like little tiny buttons don't work well. They have to be like big in order to register. So, uh, and then the second bad thing is that blue line. Um, I didn't notice it when I first installed. Um, like, I don't know if it's just like a, I don't know if it's like a, a software bug or like a hardware issue, but um, some people on the forum were noting um, pretty severe visual issues. And that was like kind of my biggest um, the biggest issue that made me nervous is that these old screens are just going to have like weird visual issues and I have a little one but and I've seen other people report that issue too and maybe it'll get fixed maybe not but honestly when you're over here like 
you, you don't notice it much, especially when you're driving, because you're not looking at this. So it's not a big deal, but it's just a little gripe. Um, the, 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 the touch screen on the old model is, is a much bigger issue, I would say, in terms of just usability. So anyway, um, but overall, it's it's like, you know, you want you want to listen to music and get maps and have some voice control in an old car. Like, this is a great option, um, and it beats, in terms of just overall, like, installation, it's relatively easy. The hardest part about installation is um, it's just not breaking trim. These uh, wood trim pieces uh, brand new uh, to replace are, are like 1200 bucks a piece. Uh, you can maybe get them on um, like eBay for cheaper, but they, they typically all come slightly broken. And what happens is you end up breaking these tabs um, or screwing at the dashboard, which is very like kind of fragile when you're using a pry tool. Uh, you can see I broke a tab up here. It doesn't sit flush like the other one. It's not a, the worst issue, but, um, you know, it just kind of sucks. I kind of broke the car a little bit as I was doing it. But overall, I mean, they're in there. They, they still have other tabs that are working. Uh, okay, so CarPlay. Um, this is what I bought it for. Um, let's just uh, go ahead and plug that in. Plug in my wife's phone. Um, so it does support wireless CarPlay. I've opted for wired CarPlay just because I think it works better. Um, yeah, it's um, the car wireless CarPlay did work fine. It's just there were there's just wireless CarPlay just kind of sucks even on a non grom unit in my experience. It's unclear which phone connects first if you have two phones that are paired with it. Um, uh, it, it can experience uh, wireless interference in some areas um, and then cause audio dropouts and things like that. And then third, you know, when you're driving around, like you don't really want to be playing with your phone. You want it to be charging, uh, especially if you're using CarPlay, which causes, you know, pretty heavy battery drain, depending on what you're doing. Um, so, you know, wired CarPlay, you don't have any of those problems. It's clear which phone's gonna pair. Uh, so that's what I've opted for. Um, uh, right now it's just the extension cable that came with the VL2 out of the glove box. Um, in the future, I might go ahead and try to like put it down where that cigarette lighter is instead of the cigarette lighter. Um, just have like a little extension, USB extension cable come up nicely there. But for now, that's what I have, so. So anyway, uh, CarPlay works pretty well. Um, like you can't swipe, like I said, um, you just can tap. And so, um, you know, you have your home screen and then you have your sort of overview screen and you can toggle between the two there. And you can do voice control like this. Directions to in and out One option I found is in and out Burger on West Telegraph Street in Washington. Let me know if I should call one of them or get directions for you. Okay, so so like I said, you, you can't actually like close this button because it's like too small. You know, the, you, know you just have to kind of like, you kind of just have to like uh, use the voice control um, and or like rely on the larger buttons. Um, let's see. Shuffle all songs. Playing all songs shuffled. Um, oh, let's get some Kate Bush going here. Um, but you know, the big buttons work pretty well. You know, not that well. Um, like using your... You kind of get a feel for it eventually. It just like requires a certain amount of pressure. Um, but you know, it's usually like you can... It's, it's enough to, to get around the UI and use it and listen to music and get directions, but you're not gonna get that full CarPlay experience, uh, at least on the 04 screen. Uh, maybe the newer screens are, are better, I'm not sure, but, um, you know, I, I'm happy with the this relatively simple install and the fact that I have CarPlay and like audio and charging my phone. Um, and that's pretty much all I was looking for. So overall, uh, do I, I like it? Yes, I like it. I would do it again, um, you know, assuming I don't have any of the problems people were reporting in the forum. Is it worth it? Um, it's pretty pricey for what it is, but then at the same time you have to consider, so if you just consider the hardware that you're getting, which is this sort of silver box and like basically, a, I don't know how beefy of a Android computer you're getting in there, but, um, you know, maybe it's overpriced from a hardware perspective, but 
if you just sort of count the the amount of like human R and D that goes into building like a device and developing the software and developing this the custom wiring harnesses for each car like <laughs> that are 10 years old um it's like yeah this makes sense it's a it's a very kind of niche and custom device that um you know you're kind of lucky to have that option so yeah it is kind of i think I, if you consider all that it, it makes the price make a lot more sense um <clears throat> you know grom is not sony you know they don't have the same resources they do and it's just a smaller operation but they're coming up with a pretty unique product that uh you know gives you a relatively modern um experience uh in, in an old car and so that's obviously going to save you money since you're driving a 10 year old car anyway so um yeah so uh there's the mic uh i just slid it in there and ran the wire down here and behind the behind the radio uh, not optimal placement. It would be much better if it was up closer to my face, but you know, it's good enough for audio for voice control uh, Making calls. It's not the clearest, but you know um, Just speak loudly or, or, or lean in a little bit if you're on the call um, They in the manual I think they recommended you place it up here um, And run it up the pillar. I didn't want to take apart the headliner though Or just have kind of loose wires. So I left it. I left it just right there and uh that's probably where it's gonna stay for a long time yep so that's my thoughts of the review um thanks everyone who participated in the group buy um super sorry to anyone whose buy didn't quite work out at least to this level um and and like you know awesome luck for people who's got the better screen that worked even better than this so that's my overall thoughts on the Grom Audio VL2 uh, infotainment system with CarPlay. Um, oh, uh, one last word is I don't care about this. Oh, I don't care about the the apps that come on the actual device at all. I only wanted it for CarPlay. Um, I haven't even tried those. I don't. I don't care honestly. And so I didn't really even install the, the GPS receiver, other than just have it sit next to the unit down there. Um, and the other thing to note too is um, I've been st stress testing this device in 114 degree weather in southern Utah, and it's it's worked great. So there's no like overheating issues from what I can tell. Um, I haven't done a lot of like you know I haven't done all day drives or anything like that, but um, yeah, other than that crappy screen, um, you do need a wireless key or a little blue Bluetooth or USB keyboard to set it up because the keyboard like doesn't work until you install the Google Google apps which is a step they have you do on your own. Probably for licensing reason. All right, excuse me. All right, um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions or want me to make another video about this thing and I can try to give you my thoughts on that. Later.